quick start for the Yankees. And uh, this is Armed Forces Appreciation Day here at Target Field. And once again, this year, we're very happy to have Major General Rick Nash with us. And uh, we're not going to blame the 6 nothing deficit on you because no. you've been here and we've won. Uh, the Twins have won before. But uh, let's talk a little bit about this day and what it means. There are a lot of family members who are here today and what it means to the families to be acknowledged here today. Well, it's a, a tremendous honor for what the Twins organization uh, and the ownership have done each and every year for the last 11 years for all the veterans and for the military families that have served and are serving uh, across the nation, across the world. Major General, today the Minnesota Twins are <clears throat> proclaimed a, a yellow ribbon company during today's pregame ceremonies. What, is, what does that mean? Well, Bert, uh, we have over 270 organizations now across Minnesota. Cities, and corporations, companies, counties uh, have now signed up and have been pro proclaimed either by Governor Pawlenty or now currently by Governor Dayton. As you saw this morning, uh, he was here to actually proclaim the Twins organization as another yellow ribbon corporation. Operation. And they're organized across the state to support military families uh, while their loved ones are deployed and when they return. And, and it's a combination of uh, faith-based organizations, healthcare organizations, law enforcement, education, and they assist with uh, the employment uh, when they return, finding them jobs, and they take care of the families when uh, members of the family are deployed, as we have been for the last uh, 13 years around the world. Well, I know Twins manager Ron Gardenhire was really excited today because uh, former uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, General Jack Vesey threw out the first pitch a significant figure here for, uh, regarding the Minnesota National Guard. He is. Uh, he's a great friend a great mentor. He uh, enlisted when he was 16 in the Minnesota National Guard and was mobilized on February 10th 1941 before Pearl Harbor before Pearl Harbor. Uh, before Pearl Harbor. Uh, FDR uh, mobilized guard divisions in preparation for what he could see looming in Europe. And so he mobilized all the guards to have a year of training. So General Vesey and uh, a lot of individuals from Minnesota, a part of the 34th Red Bull Division, mobilized to Camp Claiborne, Louisiana. And they were there on February 7th, or I'm sorry, December uh, 7th, 1941. And uh, from there, there you go. <laughs> the old one hopper. General Vesey, 92 years old uh, on uh, the end of June. That's awesome. He didn't quite have Burt's curveball in that, <laughs> but uh, it was pretty close. I don't know. It had a little downer. Well, I'll tell you what. He had a better curveball. Here's oh. a liner into center field. A better curveball than Burt's going to have when he's 92. <laughs> but General Vesey then uh, deployed with the division through uh, uh, Ireland and... and uh, England and then uh, the 34th division was the first division here from Minnesota to land in North Africa. They fought across North Africa. They skipped over Sicily but went into Italy and uh, he was a first sergeant by the time they invaded in Anzio. They did a, uh, a sea invasion at Anzio and he was battlefield commission as a second lieutenant wow. and then uh, continued serving all the way through the liberation of Rome which was the 70th anniversary on June 5th of this year. And it was overshadowed, obviously, by the next day, June 6th, right. when we had D-Day in Normandy. So it was quite an accomplishment for the 34th Red Bulls in Italy. First and second, nobody out, and a pitch inside to Brett Gardner. So he had served at every rank from private all the way through four-star general. The, with, fir the with, first man ever to do that. That is awesome. With forces now slowly coming out of Af Afghanistan back to the States, What's, does that do any effect to the Minnesota National Guard? Well, we're still mobilized around the world. We still have approximately 150 soldiers in Afghanistan today. And uh, our Air National Guard, uh, both the 148th out of Duluth and the 133rd out of Minneapolis, have airmen in Qatar and United Arab Emirates and in Kuwait. So when we start downsizing, we'll have just less deployments. But that still doesn't uh, negate the fact that we still will probably have missions around the world because today we're in Kosovo where the National Guard right. is. And as I tell folks as I go around the state speaking to different organizations, in my opinion, we're less safe than we were after 9-11. When you have issues such as uh, Iraq that is now spread over from Syria. Right. And uh, North Korea, uh, the Ukraine, uh, South Yemen, uh, Libya and Egypt and Israel and 
and the Gaza Strip, all those things are hot spots at any one particular time could cause us to again have uh, mobilizations. But so we're always trained, always prepared. Uh, so our soldiers are doing a great job. Our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and, sailor. and Marines around the nation. 3 and 0, and Gardner takes a strike. I just love what we, citizens of the United States, have come to grasp with all the servicemen now that come back and our loyalty to helping families and these guys come back sometimes you know without limbs but uh, we as a society is really taking that in I, I agree with you Dave. Uh, especially here in Minnesota with the yellow ribbon organizations that uh, we saw being presented here today to the twins it started here in Minnesota and uh, back in 2007 and now it's a Department of Defense program and other states across the United States come to Minnesota to find out how well we do that. And so it's really an attribute to the, the people and, and supporting not only the Guard, but all the services, active duty and reserves here in Minnesota. Well, when we think about Armed Forces Appreciation, it's natural to think of our involvement overseas, but unfortunately, like the National Guard is asked to help out uh, when there are times of flood or, or natural calamities, and we've had to deal with that in the upper Midwest. We did. Just recently, Dick, uh, we've had soldiers that were deployed to the Rainy River, and one would not think that that would be a case late in June that we would deploy up to the Canadian border, but they were up at International Falls helping the citizens up there because there are not many people there, but the flooding was there, yeah. and so we sent soldiers up there for approximately two weeks. And then we also had a call from the governor to support our citizens in Henderson, Minnesota, with the Minnesota River and the flooding and the uh, watching of the uh, the uh, levees down there. Fastball nearly hit Jeter. Another one over the plate. One and one. Yeah, you saw Brett Gardner hitting the ball to the deepest part of the field here, and that allowed both runners to advance Suzuki and Johnson in the third and second. One and one to Jeter. Second and third, one down, and a base hit to right field. Suzuki scores. Johnson held at third at seven to nothing, and Jeter has a couple of hits and a sacrifice fly in his final game played in Minnesota. Yeah, knocking in his second run, his 23rd RBI of the year. And like he does so well, pitch away. And just kind of softly hits it into to right field. Suzuki scores for the second time. As you mentioned, John Kelly Johnson holds up a third. Dick Bramer, Burp Lilevin, joined by Major General Rick Nash. We've done this, what, two, three times, I believe, haven't we? Uh, four. We, we're four, back in the okay. dome. Oh, back in the dome, too. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, fact, well, yeah, I was a Circle Me Burt guy at the dome. <laughs> Is that right? Well, you were here by Circle. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Lilevin. <laughs> Now, did, can you put that on your uniform, your, your, your dress so. uniform no, somehow that you were circled by Burt? <laughs> there ought to be some insignia of some sort that you can put on. It's in my heart. <laughs> Major General, how long, how many years have you been in the service now? Actually, uh, I go back to uh, July of uh, 1972, I was drafted. And so there's not many of us left in the country anymore in <laughs> uniform. So the ball hit down the right field line foul. So and served in start, Vietnam, I presume. No, I didn't. Because uh, in July, if, if you recall, July of 72, uh, the draft ended in uh, January 1st of 73. And later on that month, we pulled out forces out of Vietnam. So, And then Saigon fell in 75. But uh, So I'll start 43 years in uh, July. And you were born and raised where? In Jordan, Minnesota. Okay. And that's, again, as I was telling Dick off air, is where the state amateur baseball tournament's going to be held this year. Great baseball between town, yeah. Jordan and Belle Plaine at the Jordan Mini Met, uh, one of the wonderful venues in the state of Minnesota for baseball. One and two, the count to Ellsbury. Did you play any sports growing up? I played, that's where I grew up playing baseball, was on that field in Jordan. Unfortunately, I was an infielder, not a great athlete uh, like a pitcher. So. Yeah, yeah, they are the best athletes. Wow. Athlete, See, he listens. And he wants to be invited back. <laughs> <laughs> you can come back anytime, sir. <laughs> two and two to Ellsbury. Twins trying to keep this within reach. Swarzak had a good third inning, setting the Yankees down one, two, three, but three hits on another run here in the four. Chopped right side. Dozier pivots, gets the out there, and that's all they'll get. Jeter's force, but another run comes in. Johnson streaking in from third. And Ellsbury credited with an RBI, his fourth of the ball game, and these two runs, the first two runs that the bullpen 
have allowed so far in this series. Again, coming in 14 and two-thirds innings of shutout baseball by the bullpen. But Swarzak has given up a couple runs so far here in the top of the fourth inning. The placement of the Twins uh, acknowledgement, Armed Forces Appreciation, uh, a couple days after the 4th of July, I think that's really appropriate. I mean, we spend this weekend, uh, some of us at our patriotic best because of uh, the 4th of July and can I, you know, take a breath from that. And now here we are two days later and uh, are able to acknowledge the men and women who are responsible for our freedom. Here's a ball hook foul. And, and certainly today when you're acknowledging uh, around Target Field the Gold Star families who uh, have given so much. Yeah. It touches you believe me. Now we certainly want to you know thank Thompson Reuters for uh, hosting us today and all the military families and the twins organization providing some tickets for the families. Yep, absolutely. Right? One and two now to Mark the yeah, it's been a great organization you know right from the top with Dave St. Peter and, and Kevin Smith and I spoke to Terry Ryan earlier today and thanked him for the twins and acknowledging military families here at Target Field and obviously the poll lads and, and Mr. Gardenhire for being the catcher today for the chairman. Yeah not only today but throughout the last couple three four years of raising of the flag. That's right every game yes. acknowledging a veteran in their service yes. and, and really looking back to those World War II and those Korean and Vietnam veterans who've given so much. That's grounded fair over the first base bag past Parmalee. Ellsbury rounding second on his way to third. And it will be a single for Teixeira sending Ellsbury to third base. Well the Yankees definitely have their hitting shoes on here this afternoon. Eleven hits right now for the Yankees with two outs here in the fourth inning. Teixeira picking up his second hit as this ball just hugged down the line. Parmley holding on to runner of course he gets off that bag but the ball between he and the line right over the bag. First and third two down. McCann with an RBI double he teed off on the first pitch he saw from Ricky Nolasco and doubled off the fence in right center driving in a run. The numbers uh, speak to McCann's presence in the lineup today against Ricky Nolasco entering the game now 20 for 61 with eight home runs. I mean that's Jim Tomey Rick Reed like popped up down the line catch it <laughs> <laughs> and Bloom gets in the vicinity but can't. Sometimes you just want innings to end. Yeah. Let's go. A good effort by Trevor Plouffe right there. Of course he's uh, kind of the shortstop right now with a little mini shift that the Twins have put on. Nunez pretty much straight up the middle. Dozier out in short right field. One and one. You know, you mentioned earlier about McCann that you know he says, "Hey, I'm not having a very good year. I really don't deserve to be in the All-Star team," which he knows all about. He's been to seven of them when he was with the Braves. Two Nine seasons he wore a Brave uniform and then signed a big contract here. And a balk call and a run will come in. Mm. So Swarzak balking, sending Teixeira to second, but more importantly, bringing Ellsbury in from third. Take a look right here, see what Anthony does. Yeah, he kind of started his delivery and then kind of stopped and then restarted. And beyond that, he's about to deliver his 40th pitch, and the Twins are hoping he'd be able to pitch maybe four innings. Driven to right center field. Garcia. Ends the inning. Three more for the Yankees, and they lead it nine to nothing. And again, our thanks to Major General Rick Nash. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you. Thanks. For, uh, thank you, Dick. All you've done for the country and for representing yeah. our military. God, God bless you, you guys. Thanks.